Hello, and welcome to Linux Action News, episode 297, recorded on June 14th, 2023. I'm Chris. And I'm Wes. Hello, Wes. Let's do the news. After one year, nine months, and 28 days of development, the Debian Project proudly presents its new, stable, version 12. Yep, it's actually here. Debian Bookworm was released this week. It'll be supported for the next five years, and it's supporting over a thousand new packages. And one of those new packages is a tool called NTFS to ButterFS. And as you probably just guessed, it lets you convert NTFS drives over to ButterFS. I didn't know that was possible, and frankly, it's like magic. (laughs) And while we're talking about file systems, the read and write support for the Apple file system seems worth mentioning. Yeah, that's some interesting tooling they're shipping in there. It's not I don't even think you can find that stuff in Nix right now. It's uh, kind of just one of the things I love about Debian. Also in there, you've got GNOME 43 and Plasma 527 included. Makes it a pretty fresh and fairly compelling Debian desktop release. Also, a big deal in this release is the integration of the non-free firmware into the main ISO. So, like most of us, if you need some kind of blob, non-free firmware thing to make something in your system work, well, you no longer have to go hunt down a separate ISO. Linux 6.1 is at the core of Bookworm, a long-term supported kernel, which actually is pretty fresh if you consider that Linux 6.3 is the current release at the time of recording. Yeah, and nothing wrong with a long-term support release. That's pretty nice. Debian 12 also includes Pipewire and Wireplumber right along with it. And there was also just kind of a revamp of the fonts, including Google fonts included in this release. I I, I don't know, man. I feel like this is one of the most compelling releases of Debian in a long time. And for them, it's released in a relatively reasonable time frame. I I remember much, much longer release windows from years ago. It's just so great to see one of the pillars, one of the original pillars of the community, just continue to deliver just a great distro. And they're doing it over and over. And at the end of the day, they're making something that's pretty compelling. I want to install. Recently, the Linux Foundation, in a power combo with RISC-V International, announced the RISC-V Fundamentals course, saying it's, quote, a course designed for computer engineers and programmers looking to accelerate their tech career. Yeah, obviously the Linux Foundation and RISC-V International are incentivized to just bring more people into this space. And that's kind of what these courses are targeted at. In part, they're going to focus on getting individuals up to speed with the basics of the RISC-V architecture. And I think from a developer perspective, also help people transition from, say, x86 or ARM architecture to the RISC-V and maybe port their application. If you're worrying it might be all fluff, well, don't worry. It does get into the weeds. The course covers assembly language, C programming, and operating system basics, among many topics. I think it's a pretty smart angle, and um, I think it's great to see these two come together to make this available. But I think the miss here, and I I understand they got to make money, but I think the miss here is that it's not free. Like, I think if you really want to open the floodgates to developers, you make this free to the entire community. Right now, they're currently charging 99 US dollars for the course. I suppose at $99, that's priced such that they could offer special discounts to certain people in a program or something like that, but that still seems gated to me. But on the other hand, if you're considering taking the risky dive and you have a big workload ahead of you, maybe that $99 is worth it. If you've ever complained about the state of email clients on Linux, well, this week might just be your chance to make a difference. The team behind the Evolution email client is asking the community to test their beta flat pack to get the fit and finish across the line. They've been fine-tuning it for the last few years, and now is the time to push for that final polish. The project has already stacked up around 130,000 installations from Flathub and wants to make that experience as good as possible. So it's trying to draw attention to that beta channel. Writing on their blog, quote, That's why I'd like to raise awareness of the beta channel with Evolution. If you're a bit more advanced user who would like to help with testing and you use Evolution from Flathub, please consider switching to the beta channel. 
linode.com slash land. Head on over there, get $100 in 60-day credit on a new account. And it's a great way to support the show and check out the exciting news. Linode is now part of Akamai. All the tools that we love, like the cloud manager, the API that's well-documented with lots of libraries, the CLI tooling that's simply delight, all the things that we use to build, deploy, and scale in the cloud, they're still there. But now they're combined with Akamai's power and global research, and they're expanding their services to offer more cloud computing resources and tooling while still providing that reliable, affordable, and scalable solution for individual users or a business of any size. It's how we distribute everything to the public for the last few years. It's what we've built our entire infrastructure on, and it's part of Akamai's global network of offerings. Data centers are going to be expanding worldwide. They're investing big there. They're going to give us all access to even more resources to help us grow our businesses, our projects, and help serve our clients, our customers, and our friends and our family. So why wait? Go experience the power of Linode now Akamai. Go to linode.com slash L-A-N. Go learn how Linode now Akamai can help scale your application from the cloud to the edge. Linode.com slash LAN. And thank you to Collide. Collide.com slash LAN. Collide can help Okta users achieve 100% fleet compliance. If a device isn't compliant, the user can log into your cloud applications until they've fixed the problem. And the moment Collide's agent does detect a problem, it alerts the user and also gives them instructions on how to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set time, they're blocked. It's that simple. Collide's solution here ensures device compliance is part of authentication, which not only reduces support tickets and IT frustration, but also ensures 100% compliance. Learn more or book a demo at collide.com slash LAN. NextCloud Hub 5 was announced this week, and as Frank Karlschak, the CEO, put it, they're focused more on the good stuff and less of the bad stuff. Specifically, one of the areas their keynote spent a fair amount of time on was the ethics of NextCloud. Of course, there's this new topic around AI. So AI is rising, right? And it's, of course, very powerful and an interesting technology. But is there an ethical way to leverage it? Is there like a, a, like a, like a thoughtful, responsible way to use this more new technology without having the problems? So there's another challenge around climate change. Obviously, the computer space, the IT space, all the servers, they have a gigantic CO2 footprint. Is there a way to bring this under control, to minimize that? That's something we really have to deal with as, as IT industry. So I really think that we have a responsibility. We as a software community, as software developers, we have a responsibility of goals and ethics. We cannot just build any software. We want to build good software. Of course, there are many new improvements in Hub 5, the team is touting 10 new enhancements across NextCloud. One of those nice features is file locking support in the desktop client. As described by marketing director Yoast Supportfleet. So the desktop client allows you to sync files locally because not all files can be edited in the browser. For example, if you have Photoshop documents, you need to work on these locally on your desktop in Photoshop. Now the desktop client can now automatically lock the files when you open them in Photoshop. And when you're done and you've saved them, it unlocks them again. So this way, your team members will not edit a file while you were doing creating a conflict. That's, of course, a super powerful way to make your collaboration easier and more smooth. The Files app has some new color effects you can do, as well as some back background pass-through. But another area that I think sees some real nice improvement is the tagging feature. Finally, I think, is the implementation it should have been all along. It's more powerful now. It's displayed inline in the Files app. And it also tags now work with workflow automation. So you can tag something, set up a workflow automation, and NextCloud will just automatically process it on the back end. And one of the apps that seems to be getting the most attention from release to release is NextCloud Talk, which really has been moving from strength to strength and really filling out the feature set. And with Hub 5, they've now added something that makes it a serious Slack alternative. Today, we have one more exciting thing to announce because today we are releasing NextCloud Talk for the desktop. We will be we're supporting Mac, we are supporting Windows, and of course, we are supporting Linux. The desktop clients support all the features we know and love from the web version of NextCloud Talk. Currently, it's in beta, and we encourage you to try it out and tell us what you think. 
We, of course, will link to the announcement, because the range of features here is basically impossible to cover in just one episode. But that very fact raises a question. How are users supposed to keep up and take advantage of all this new stuff? Well, Frank says solving that problem has been a big theme for this release. At the very beginning, I told you for this release that we, for the first time, have a theme, something that really binds all the features together. And that's, of course, as I said, a digital workspace. And you can really see, I think, from all the different pieces we had here, how this all fits together into one very nice integrated collaboration suite. I mean, you have the smart picker, which binds everything together. You can link from one resource to another. We have the widgets to show them. We have the integrated search, the integrated notification, and so on and so on. <clears throat> so this is really a very nice integrated collaboration suite, which I I think it's very, very useful and very impressive. The Smart Picker is a workflow game changer for Nextcloud, in my opinion. If you haven't used it yet, it might be time to upgrade just to get that tool. Think like the fastest desktop launcher with a bunch of Nextcloud native features and generative AI tools built in. And it's great. You know, all this stuff is a lot. Not everybody wants all these new tools and apps and all of that kind of stuff. And Frank clarified and said that Nextcloud's priority is to remain modular. Um, but of course, often people come to us and say, okay, this is great, but I also only want to use parts of Nextcloud. Maybe I want to use only the talk chat video conferencing part or only the groupware part or only the file swing and share part or other things or maybe I want to extend it with other solutions maybe you want to integrate a different mail client into Nextcloud or a different chat into Nextcloud and so on and I'm really happy to say that everything we showed you all the components are all plugins that we call apps they're all components that you can switch on and off separately so Nextcloud is not one monolithic thing but it's really a component of different things. And you can really switch on and off the ones you want to integrate into other solutions. You can really have your collaboration suite as you want it. I think this is a very, very powerful and helpful concept. That is definitely nice to hear. One last update I'll call out is the new Notes design. The Nextcloud Notes app has been one of their more popular apps, and Hub 5 Notes received a new three-column layout and a note list that separates notes by the month they're created. It also has an improved settings screen. Maybe all of that will finally solve your notes problem, Chris. I have been using it more and more. I mean, for like quicker notes, things I want to share with the wife and stuff like that. But there's also some really good third-party apps on iOS and Android, like QuillyPad on Android, that just work with it so well and take it to the next level. So I, I actually I, I have been liking it. I don't know if it's the full solution, but it's definitely one of them. I wanted to call out, Hub5 has some slick integration with Whisper transcription. So wherever they can, they seem to be trying to implement local AI as much as possible and not using remote services and not sending data offsite whenever possible. When they do, they try to make it really clear that's going to be happening. So one of the things they've done is implemented Whisper at all different levels of Nextcloud Hub5. So for example, say you have a Nextcloud talk call that's recorded and some staff couldn't make it. After the call is over, you can have Whisper transcribe it locally on your box and then make it available to everybody as a text and it automatically can share it out to everybody who was in that meeting or invited to that meeting. Uh, another example that could be in there is, you know, you have uh, a, a document that you're opening up in the office editor and you want to just dictate to it. Whisper can actually be used to do live dictation into the document. Of course, it can, you could probably run it on audio files. There's just a lot of power there and the fact that it's all local, it's not sending your data offsite. It seems like the commercial companies that are going all in on AI, they don't touch that, that privacy aspect. I mean, Nextcloud is moving fast, but in this area, they're way ahead of what Microsoft and Google are doing with AI in terms of privacy. And it really seems like Nextcloud is implementing these features in a much more thoughtful and user-respecting way. That gets my vote because it kind of cuts down on the hype. It, it reduces some of the privacy trade-offs and still gets you the core tooling that makes you more productive. That's just really great to see, and Hub5 takes it to the next level. Uh, a quick production note, Linux Action News will be off next week. Both Wes and I are going to be traveling, but we'll keep an eye on the world of Linux and open source, and we will be back after that, so go to linuxactionnews.com slash subscribe for all the ways to get new episodes. And linuxactionnews.com slash contact for ways to keep in touch. Did we miss a story? Boost in with a new podcast app or using Alby at the Podcast Index and tell us what you'd like to hear us cover. And we won't be back next week, but stay tuned for our next episode with the latest Linux and open source news. Thanks for joining us. And that's all the news 
for this week. 